Hi guys, well it's Mark from Burton Bibles and today we are sitting down with uh, Jack from the Bible Society and uh, it's a real pleasure uh, to be here, I'm very thankful for Jack for uh, giving us some of his time today um, and inviting me down to talk to him, uh, talk to me about the Bible Society and a little bit about what they are, what they do and what they've got planned, what they've got coming up and uh, perhaps a little bit about how we can how we can support them. So I hope you find this video uh, interesting. Um, we're just going to start perhaps by just talking very generally about the Bible Society. Who are who are the Bible Society, Jack? Who are the Bible Society? <laughs> well, actually, as an organisation, we we've been around a long time, uh, over two hundred years. Wow. Okay. Um, and really, in a nutshell, Bible Society exists to make the Bible available to everyone. Um, and when mm. you know when we say everyone, we we mean you know uh, as broad uh, uh, a spectrum of humanity as we possibly can. Right. Uh, so that involves a lot of translation work. Uh, it involves uh, sort of trying to meet specific needs uh, mm -hmm. of different audiences. Uh, then, as an organisation, as a charity, it, you know, it's, we also do a lot of uh, relief work. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of uh, supporting uh, other countries that struggle financially. Where you know, there's, we we think of the the UK. Um, you know, there's there's a, a decent demand for Bibles in the UK, mm. but we're spoiled for choice. Um, yeah. you know, we are we are really spoiled. The market's huge. It's, it? Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Just the variety that's available to us in the UK, whereas there's other countries where, in terms of demand, it far exceeds what mm. we have in the UK. But in terms of availability both in terms of, uh, of Bibles in general, but specifically Bibles in, a, in someone's native language. Yeah. Uh, there's just nothing available. Yeah. Um, and so we do a huge amount of work to try and make the Bible available to everyone. And that goes far beyond the shores mm -hmm. of the UK. Yeah, no, a absolutely. I mean, we often say um, on the channel that there is literally a Bible for, we're, we're very blessed, there's a Bible for anybody. Um, and opinions will vary on, on Bibles and some people will say I don't like that mm. um, and I don't like that but at the end of the day we, we can go out and we, we've got Bibles that we love we've got Bibles that we appreciate and that we're fans of um, so yeah there, there's something for everybody here but of course abroad it's perhaps perhaps not the same um, and I, I suppose you're thinking are you thinking particularly of more what we would call third world countries or impoverished countries or are you meaning Europe that, in general? Or? Well, that, that can be the case. I think, you know, there's other countries where that, not necessarily third world, mm. uh, you know, China, the demand, the sort of Christianity as a religion in China is growing massively. Because China is a communist country and yes. predominantly against Yes, and this is the thing. We, you know, we it's it's easy to forget that um, Christians in other countries are persecuted for yeah, being Christian. Absolutely, you know, yeah. it's 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 again something that in the UK we, it's the it's the dominant religion in the UK. Um, and so, trying to support other countries where Christians mm. are persecuted, uh, is a huge part of the work that we do. And that's that's actually something that we do as part of uh, United Bible Societies, which is right. a fellowship that we sit under. So you've got you know lots of different Bible societies in different countries. Yes. And a lot of the work we will do will be supporting them to help them fulfill the mission. You know, we, we, we have big ambitions and sometimes, but you need people who are there, who yeah. understand the culture, who understand the roots, yeah. and can, that we can actually support in their mission as part of the sort of broader mission of Bible Society in general. So, there's, so it is indeed a global, global organisation, yeah. United Bible Societies, but um, here, for example, it's the Bible Society in the UK, and we here from this from this office then we're in swindon uk just so you know um would it be primarily the uk market that is dealt with from here or do, is there indeed international elements oh, on site here yeah lots of international elements okay. on site here so just th thinking just go thinking of the the publishing team for example so mm. we're, we're one team within bible society right and even within publishing we are split with a domestic focus and an international focus right um and actually the the bulk volume of um, Bibles we produce are for other countries. Oh, right. It's not for the domestic market. Okay. Uh, the bulk of the development work we do on, on Bibles is for a UK, is for a domestic audience. Right. And then um, where we are able to do that part of the you know, Bible development well, mm. then we see ideas that we've created for a UK market then get used by Bible societies in other countries. Mm. And the benefits of the work that we've done focusing on domestic audience suddenly becomes a lot more powerful mm. as it gets taken on by other areas and other countries. So would you say that the Bible Society is primarily a publisher? 
or would you say it's a bit no, more complicated than that? I'd say it's a, it's a lot more complicated yeah, than yeah. <laughs> um, So, uh, we, you know, we are, as a publisher, we are part of Bible Society. Mm -hmm. We are the publishing uh, division of Bible Society. Uh, Bible Society is a charity. We're a missional organization. And so within Bible Society, you've got different departments uh, that are focusing on different aspects of the missional work that we do. And all of it is obviously centered on making the Bible available, making it accessible, um, and supporting anyone who wants to read the Bible any way mm. that we can. But that can that can be done in lots of different ways. Yeah. So Open the Book, for example, which you, I'm sure you've probably heard mm -hmm. of, um, you know, is, is in schools, uh, you know, secular schools, uh, sharing Bible stories, getting children involved and, and, and sort of piquing interest from, a, from an early age in Bible engagement. Mm. Uh, we've got things like The Pitch, uh, which is uh, uh, films that are created where you've got different people pitching film ideas based on a story or a theme from the Bible. Right. And these are, you know, exceptionally, I would highly recommend uh, uh, if any, mm. anyone watching this to check out The Pitch. Uh, okay. Because the films that are uploaded are absolutely exceptional, some of them, and I've gone on to, you know, some of them have gone on to win multiple awards and get uh, secure additional funding All and right. win awards at film festivals. But it, again, you've got in instances like that, you've got uh, people involved in film who might not even consider themselves as Christian mm. and who have maybe never read the Bible before, who are now reading the Bible and then trying to communicate that outwardly mm. through film and media. Right. Uh, which is incredibly powerful. So is that again under the Bible Society yes, umbrella? Yes, right. absolutely. Okay. So, so and you know we've also got the the, the fundraising element of, of the work that we do, mm -hmm. uh, whether that be uh, through um, appeals uh, for specific projects to help support uh, a, a you you know a domestic project, or it could be to support something internationally. Uh, obviously, we also um, have people who will leave legacy donations to Bible Society, people for whom Bible Society, you know, they're, they're passionate about the work that we do, about making the Bible available. Mm. And, and really, it's for us, it's now trying to make sure that when we say the Bible for everyone, that we are authentically trying to do that. So, yeah. you know, any age range, uh, you know, any nationality, uh, whatever language you speak, we want to try and make sure that you've got scripture available mm. to you. So I think that's that's a fantastic um, aim uh, and ambition. And um, I noticed that yeah, you've got your mission statement on the wall behind the camera here, and it's it talks about um, offering the Bible in ways that facilitate life-giving encounters with God. Um, and that that certainly is what the Scriptures will do. Um, we know that it's not a book like any other. It's it's the living, breathing Word of God. And as such, it can speak to people and people will have life giving encounters, but they need to have something that's available, that's mm -hmm. accessible. And if it can be targeted, if it can be focused uh, to a specific group of people, then that's really something that the Bible Society are very, are very good at and are very concerned about. Would that be true? Jeff? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and I think especially um, so, again, thinking as publishers, as, as that's the department that I'm in, um, you know, thinking about how, what's our role in terms of Bible Society's mission and making the Bible available. And for us, that really s sort of, there was quite a significant shift in the way that we publish, which all started around the Good News Bible Youth Edition, which obviously you've, re you've yeah. reviewed before. So we'll probably leave a little link in the description to the Good News uh, Youth Bible, which did feature on the channel um, as well. So we'll put some links into that so you can have a look at that in your in your own time yes the good news youth bible was uh, was a fantastic addition jack and we spoke about it briefly mm. upstairs but that was a real labor labor of love would perhaps be the phrase to <laughs> yeah um yeah that 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 was it's, it's difficult to put a uh, to sort of say just how significant that mm. project was for for us as an organization actually beyond mm. publishing but for us as bible society because it fundamentally changed how we perceived our role as publishers of the Bible. Mm. I think, you know, there's, as we've said, there's, um, there's so many Bibles available to us in the UK. We really are sport for choice, whether there's mm. editions that you love or translations that you really have issues with. The fact that we can sit there and discuss that, yeah. each, you know, we're, we're, we're spoiled in that sense. We are. Um, <laughs> and I think, Certainly, uh, you know, previously we've followed similar trends to other people who produce, other publishers who, who publish a Bible. You get the rights to a translation, and mm -hmm. so you, you print 
uh, six or seven editions of that Bible where it's the exact same Bible but with a different colour depending on the preferences that people may or may you know have oh I like I like a nice leather leather bound Bible yeah I want to just standard hardback I want a compact and and so we and we were we were doing exactly the same and I think what really changed for us was when we did the youth edition with uh, which was in partnership with uh, British Youth for Christ mm. And them challenging us, really, in terms of how of, of the approach that we take and saying, you know, if, if we're doing a Bible that is specifically for young people and to support mm -hmm. young people as they read the Bible, then let's involve them in that project. Let's yeah. actually not just sort of, let's not just sort of, you know, canvas, oh, do you like this? Do you like this? Let's actually get them involved in the design mm. and the development and let's find out what they want in it, let's find out what they don't want in it, mm. and let's, let's actually genuinely build something that they have fed into that process yeah. and, and helped us to create. Yeah, it was very much listening to their voice, I think, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. And if you see the, the, the edition we're speaking about, the Youth Bible, you, that comes through very, very strong. Um, it really is a Bible like, unlike any others, I would say. Um, me and Jack were speaking about Youth Bibles, and some of them can be... Um, you can tell that it's been put together by by people in suits or something in a in a room, and it's uh, been done by committee and yeah, some designed of it can, by committee. <laughs> yeah, it can come across a little patronising and things like that, perhaps with some of the stuff that's in there. But certainly the youth bible, I think it hits the hits the right tones, and it's certainly a bible that I would uh, would give to my my, my oh, children anyway. Yeah. Anyway, it's uh, it really is a helpful a helpful addition. Oh, mm. thank you. I, 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 and you know, for, I think. It was a it was quite a daunting process, mm. uh, and it, it it's a certainly a, it's a very labour intensive. You know, mm. you, when you when you're doing a project like that, because of the amount of research that you need to do beforehand, and because we had our own, I guess, as you know, Bible publishing experts, mm. we have our own biases as to what we think goes into a good Bible, and Definitely. to have young people challenge us on that. Mm. And to, to say to us, well, actually, we don't, you know, you you may think that's important, but we don't. Yeah. And having to, you know, if we're going to authentically listen to them and sort of having to yeah. go against our own preconceptions as to what makes a good Bible. Absolutely. You can't um, sort of say, listen to listen to some things and then ignore, exactly. ignore other things. And that even was true about the, the cover, wasn't it, of the, of the Youth Bible? The, yes. It, uh, it was a cover that I think there was. Derek was saying there were seven, perhaps seven or eight different choices. Oh, or oh different yeah, designs. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And ultimately, it was opened up to uh, the people who would be reading it, the, the young, <laughs> the young uh, elements, and that was what they chose, wasn't it? it yes, was the popular one. It, it wasn't the most, and, and again, that was a classic example. It wasn't the most popular design within the publishing team. No, we, 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 we there was a different design that we all loved as a mm. team. But then we, this is the whole point. We, we were not the. You know, we're, we're mixed age range, but none of us were the intended audience, yeah, let's yeah. say. So, and, well, it, and it takes a lot of honesty to acknowledge that, doesn't it? I think, and and take that kind of position. It, it, I think it's just, it was. It, you know, it was well, because we hadn't worked like that before. That was a very uncomfortable process, mm. and and really, like I said, it was daunting at times. But then. After we released it and we started, you know, the, the impact was immediate. Mm. It, it, you know, it, it far exceeded our, our you know, our, our wildest sort of ambitions as to what it would mm. achieve. It's, it's already, ex, you know, exceeded that. It's been translated into seven other languages. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, which, yeah. which is, you know, again, this is sort of highlights the work we do domestically can have mm. a huge impact internationally when we get it right. And I think, you know, it's still, you know, it's published in 2018 and it's yeah. still one of our best-selling Bibles year yeah. on year, very yeah. consistently. And I think just because it's, because actually, you know, if, if, if you're a young person looking at the Youth Bibles available, and, and I, I have to say, actually, since we've published um, the Good News Bible Youth Edition, uh, you know, we've seen other, uh, other translations adopt a lot of the yes. sort of stylings, yes. um, um, that interactive element. Yeah. And that's fantastic. Yeah, you know, definitely. again, because from, you know, from a missional perspective, there's going to be people who uh, they may love the content, but they're loyal to a particular translation. Yeah. And so if other translations that we don't have access to are able to, to sort of, you know, lift some of the good work that we've done mm. to enhance, you know, it, it, it almost elevated youth Bibles. Mm. It elevated the standard of youth Bibles available. I think and that's, so, yeah. that's something that that's fantastic news. And uh, the, the other thing that you're quite concerned about is that the, it should be accessible to all in terms of the price point as well. 
Um, yes. Because even even a lot of the youth Bibles that we see nowadays um, are priced uh, are priced competitively, but even some people can't afford them. And I think it's really good that they've that one of the best youth Bibles, certainly the the uh, the Good News Bible, uh, is priced at a point where it doesn't really exclude anybody. Not in this country, perhaps anyway. Um, it, it's available. It's accessible to most people. I'd have thought most budgets. Yes, uh, that is. It's actually something that's really important. It's a really important part of, of any project for us. Is mm. we we, whenever we're trying to come up with a, a new concept or a new idea, we always start by looking at well, what's the mission or impact of the, what we're trying to achieve? What is yes. it we're trying to? Who are we trying to reach? And how are we going to have the impact? And then it becomes about how do we add as much value to that as possible. And I think that's quite a, a um, that's quite a, a different way of publishing. Definitely, it's, yeah. It's, it's quite often, you know, um, we're sort of ruled by by margins and rising costs, and mm. you know, you end up going. So, well, how can we make this cheaper? How can we yeah. how can we produce this cheaper? How can we cut things out? How do we cut things out? Yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, we're we're very much of the opinion how do, you know how can we get more into this? Yeah. And that's you know, we, I, I think it's we, we would say that we we don't produce the the, the cheapest. Bibles on the market. No, no. But we do believe we produce the best value. Yeah. And I think that's a really important distinction because, you know, things like the, the Youth Bible Project, the Family uh, Bible Project, and obviously the, this, the new um, Children's Rainbow Edition that we're, we're going to be speaking about, the, your, the, the commitment to a project like this and, and to work in that way, it's, it's a it takes a huge amount of the team's resources. Mm. Um, uh, both in time and, and both in uh, in terms of cost and development cost and, and researching and, and printing yeah. and retype setting and you know it's it's a really big commitment and so if we were look if we were doing work like that and looking at it from a profit perspective mm. it just doesn't work no it, it just doesn't work sense, does it, yeah to do it that you, way? you you mm. wouldn't you just wouldn't work like that mm. but I think the the benefits of being part of Bible Society you know we are we are a mission charity. We are part of that charity. We, we, any any um, profit that is derived from anything that we publish goes back into our mm. charitable, our missional work. Yeah. But actually, you know, we were thinking we've got a really significant role we can play here mm. because if we're producing Bibles that are targeted and designed to be as impactful as possible to create as many, to create as positive an experience for that person who's reading that Bible, as we possibly can, mm. then actually that's that's facilitating our mission. It's making it's unlocking the scripture yeah. for them in a way perhaps that they haven't been able to before. It's encouraging new people to actually pick Absolutely. up a Bible for the first time. Absolutely. And so if we can do that, then that's a huge part of our mission. Yeah. And as long as you know, if we can do that and it not cost the you know cost the charity lots of money to do, well that's a that's a double win. Absolutely. And the two editions that you that have been this produced via this new new process um, is the youth bible and the family bible the family uh, edition we've also featured on the channel and we've done some giveaways uh, and i know that they were very well received um, by those who received them and that's an edition that was again produced with that same niche focus in mind it, here's a totally new edition it's not just going to be the text from the youth mm. bible squeezed into something else it is literally totally overhauled the landscape that that, that yeah. thing that you did where you flipped the text so it, it read uh, it read horizontally or whatever it was it was quite unique and with the cover that you could mark on and things like that uh, I know I sat down and did plenty of sessions with my family and it really brought brought us all around around the book and some of us would be doing um, some coloring in some of us would be doing some uh, some drawing, others would be discussing, and it was a it was a fantastic interactive experience. I must say, they were got some great memories of, of things like that, and that's exactly what you're referring to. I would imagine when you say you're trying to make the, that experience of opening that of you opening your Bible, a Bible, the most positive. Yes, yeah, possible. absolutely, and you know, and you know everything you've just said is so lovely to hear because it's exactly what we wanted for for yeah, family edition. Well, yeah, it works. Um, yeah, creating really positive bible memories yeah and you know we 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 know from there's so much research available um you know uh, and youth for christ have been fantastic in in sort of um sharing the research that mm. they've done and you know every they do this big research piece every year 
And one of the questions that that's, gets asked uh, to young people, it's a thousand young people across the UK, so, um, the pred predominantly church, some unchurched. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions they ask is, what has the single biggest impact on your faith? Or words, words to that effect. Yeah. And every year, the top answer emphatically has been family. Mm -hmm. So then you look at that and you look at the, the, re the, the Faith in Nexus report that NICE did, which I know we've mentioned before. Um, interestingly, that big research piece by uh, NYSA, we were already working on the family edition. Mm -hmm. um, and then they released this huge, massive document of research, which basically highlights the need for family Bible engagement. Right. The importance of um, faith talk at home being normal and welcomed and inviting conversation and creating a, a culture where it's okay to ask questions mm. and it's, it's okay to have different opinion, differing opinions. Yeah. It, the, the, it's, it's really about getting from a, from a, ch a child and a young person's perspective. You know, we know that when it gets, when people get to sort of university age, whether they're going to university or perhaps into, you know, their first uh, proper employment, mm. that's where we see a significant drop yeah. uh, in people attending church and in people stepping away from their faith. And, you know, really we think a lot of that is to do with they haven't they haven't got Bible confidence. No, no, that's right. They haven't got the conviction uh, the, the, of themselves that would come from a, a good foundation of Bible-centred um, discussion within the family. I, I would I would imagine that's a big thing, and it does it does require a, a big shift in your own mind as a parent Definitely. as well, because all too often it's very easy for that experience to become one-dimensional. You know, here let me read you the Bible, you know, yes. that's, that, that, that doesn't provide too much engagement. And really what we want is for them, for the, for children to get their own faith, um, and to get it for themselves. And you stand a much better chance of that if you're discussing things and interacting. And, Absolutely. Yeah. We, you, if it's the same, you know, you can have someone sit there and tell you this is the way something is, and yeah. you might be able to yeah, repeat yeah. that back to them if it's said enough. Yeah. But doesn't what does that mean for you? No, exactly. As yeah. opposed to you discovering, yeah. And you know it, that's what we want to create these Bibles is this invitation to mm. discover. And yeah. the family Bible is a classic example. We were saying to people, you know, we really want this to be. It's it's not it's not a small Bible, mm. you know. It's, it's a big Bible, but it is. Yeah, that's it's not something to be carried down. We want it to be at yeah. home, open up on the table, yeah. inviting people to come in and, and take part as Definitely. friends come over, neighbors, you know. It's something that's always out mm. for people to just walk past and and and, and actually take part in, mm. as opposed to it just being something that's sort of read to us. It's mm. something for us to experience together. Absolutely. So um, that brings us perhaps quite nicely on to something new that's that's coming out that's on the horizon from the Bible Society, and that is the Good News children's rainbow edition um jack tell us a little bit about this edition um what's coming out yeah this is hugely exciting for us um again an absolutely massive massive project that's been sort of years in development um wow. and that we've done in partnership with re quest um re quest, RE quest. so re quest is a division of you for christ mm -hmm. um so you for christ uh as a evangelistic organization um has a division known as RE Quest, which operates in schools. And that's basically because when you're going to schools, you are not necessarily always going to interfaith schools, but mm -hmm. RE is part of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. And so it's really about a, a language shift in, in how you talk about Christianity, where you're not assuming the people that you're speaking to are Christian. Mm -hmm. And the Rainbow Bible has actually been uh, this, uh, there's been editions of the Rainbow Bible since I think 1976, I believe was the first edition. Oh, right, wow. Um, and the, the currently, um, the new edition is publishing 8th of September. This is the current edition that's available. Yes, and this was the, that. Yeah, but this was the first edition that uh, Bible Society uh, published as uh, sole publisher and distributor in the UK for the Good News Bible translation. Okay. Um, and really, it was a case of we were looking at the, the existing Rainbow Edition. And obviously, we'd learned so much um, from the Youth Bible and Family ed uh, Edition project. We'd, we'd learned so much about uh, about ourselves as publishers, but also about how we want to work, how we want to operate. Yeah. 
And so when it came to looking at the, the rainbow, the existing rainbow edition, which is our best selling Bible is it? domestically. Right, Absolutely. Okay. It is our best. Selling. This, this current edition is our best selling Bible. Which I guess added to the. Well, the, the general rule is if, if you've got if you've got a best selling Bible, don't mess with it is, is the sort of the general general yes, rule that you might yes. take. But then this is again where we when we're focusing on what we're trying to do and the, the mission of what we're trying to do. When we looked at the, the the current Rainbow Edition, it just we we didn't feel it was anywhere near as good as what it could be, right? And nowhere near as impactful as it could be. Mm -hmm. And actually, when we looked at other uh, children full text children's Bible, there's lots of you know story Enriched. Bibles yeah, and, yeah. and 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 that are absolutely fantastic. But in terms of full text, of, you know, a child's first full text Bible, we realised that actually. Not only did we feel we could create a, a better edition of what we pr currently had, but actually what, what was available to children in general wasn't very strong. No. And with everything that we'd learned from the youth edition, everything we'd learned from the family edition, we knew that we could do it so much better. And as soon as, as, soon as we'd had that sort of, that sort of realisation, was, that, that was it. There was, it was full mm. steam ahead. We, this is what we need to do. Um, and again, it's it's one of those it's one of those situations where there was very little, sort of, very little talk about is this something we want to do. It was a case of right now we want to do this. How do we go about doing it? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've we've got a we've got a, a, a commitment. We see it as we have a commitment as publishers to produce the best Bibles we can for the audience we're trying to reach. Yes, yes, absolutely. So you presumably um, took on board a lot of the. Um, advice and research from RE, RE Quest and produced this edition, which I have to say, having had a flick through and alongside the previous previous edition, is is absolutely wonderful. Oh, thank it, you. It, no, that's. It, it, I mean, uh, as a book, it. I was just flicking through it there as you were talking, and it, it just sort of <laughs> got me kind of into it a bit more, and I started to read a little bit more, and to you know, it really draws the eye in. There's some wonderful illustrations in here, Jack. Um, tell us a little bit about about why why we have these illustrations and a little bit more about them because they are. Sorry, they are I'm fantastic. really distracted by them. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Sorry, guys, guys, we're filming at the moment. You right to just keep it keep it Sorry. down a little bit? Is that all right? <laughs> don't worry about yeah. that. That's all right. No worries. Sorry, <laughs> don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't I couldn't focus. That's all right. Don't worry about it. Uh, just pop your thing off and let me just have a look. Make sure it's. Um, I just want to check that it's that it is on. I'm pretty sure it is. It's just that I can't see the live. Yeah, let's just have a look. Do, do, do. Yeah, yeah, it's on. That's great. That'll be. Yeah. No problem. Sorry, I could just feel. I I, I just we'll, couldn't focus. Don't worry. We'll go back. And um, I think we were just about. I picked up the Bible and, yeah. and just had a look through. So. So yeah, as we, as we look through this edition, and we'll again we'll put some links to this to this uh, Bible so you can have a closer look at it. There's some wonderful illustrations, um, such as David and Goliath and uh, and things like that. Um, tell us a little bit more about the illustrations, Jack, because that's a, undoubtedly a big part of a children's Bible. It has to have some yeah. some pictures, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, this is I think when you whether you've got you're, you're looking at an audience that's pro perhaps had Bible stories read to them in big Bible story books, yes. sort of the, the sort of key well-known stories, and they'll always be beautifully illustrated. And every edition, previous edition of the Rainbow Bible has always had illustrations. Yeah. Um, and so we knew that we wanted, we, we, that this was going to have illustrations, and that was a really significant part of it. But just like with um, the, the youth and the, the family edition, we, we didn't want to make any assumptions when it no. came to choosing the style of illustration. And so that was something that, again, we... We really got the children to actually contribute to and to take part in. Mm. Uh, we had five different illustrators uh, submit samples of their work, and then we sent those samples to schools across the UK and got children to vote on which style they liked best. Yeah. And off the back of that, chose the illustrator and yeah. and have these beautiful illustrations. Because what what we like as adults might not be what. The children like it Absolutely. ultimately. It's uh, through the beauties in the eye of the beholder, as they say. So the style that I mean, there's Daniel in the lion's den there. Um, so the style that we have here is more of a kind of, I would say it's definitely influenced by um, the graphic novel type 
um, type influence. You know, it's a it's cartoony, but it's done in a very very real sort of way as yeah. well. Um, it's it's quite more it's, it's more in line with sort of animation that yes. children are used to, to to seeing. It's it's going to have a much broader appeal. And actually, when we when we put the different styles out to test, this this particular style was the emphatic winner. Yes. Yeah. But so it wasn't even close. It wasn't even yeah, close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. That's that's. That's cool, and we have the great fish. Um, the some of the obviously there's some great um, accounts in the Bible that lend themselves to yeah. to illustration. And although we'll never know exactly what they what they look like, of course, um, it's always interesting and fascinating to me anyway to to see how the particular artist has uh, has interpreted it. So it's got a lot of wonderful illustrations, but um, how else is it sort of specifically aimed at uh, children? I mean, I notice you've yeah. got some. Some verses that have been, or, or some comments that have been um, inserted, um, w w is that a big part of it as well? Absolutely. Again, one one of the things that we we know is really effective is interaction. Uh, you know, we mm. that that we the Bible is something that we don't just want a child to to be reading. We want them to be really pausing to think about what they've just read, um, trying to put it into a, a, their own context. Uh, Trying to get them to have activities around it, or to draw and uh, you mm. know uh, journal elements around it as well. And I think it's just the thing is we all have very very different learning styles. Mm. We all have different preferences yes. in terms of, of how we read and how we experience things. And so making sure that there's supportive content because it's really the supportive content that's going to have the biggest impact on on the translation itself. You know we know the Good News Bible translation is a great translation to use. It's got very clear language. It's inclusive. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, the language level isn't particularly you know, difficult yeah. to read. And so it's a very suitable translation. But without the supportive content that's been designed for children, with the input of children as well, mm. It just it, it it's still a very very difficult thing. You know, the Bible is a very difficult book to read. Well, it's, a big, it's a big book, and there's a lot of text. You know, you can't get around that. You no, know, it's um, it's so it behoves us even more then to take great care with how we with how we produce um, such a such an edition. And I've noticed there's some fantastic um, helps in here. So this isn't this isn't just a war. <laughs> this isn't uh, an edition without without um, a great deal of thought that's gone into the helps. We've got an introduction to the Bible here, which um, you know seeks to just outline how the, how the Bible is made up, all the different sections of it, how to read it as well. Something about the dates, the timeline, the big story of the Bible, you know, mm. things like that are fantastic and perhaps... So the children's rainbow uh, edition then, Jack, this is something that uh, I understand is something that you want to see going into schools a lot. Um, tell us a little bit about the relationship that you have with schools, yeah. and in particular this this edition. Yeah, absolutely. So currently, and it's difficult to, to know the exact sort of percentage, but a vast majority of the current Rainbow Edition, which is this, this is the one that's currently available, yeah, um, uh, end up in schools, mm -hmm. and that's a mixture of both faith schools and secular schools where RE is part of the curriculum. Yes, um, but. It's, it's very well established in, uh, as a, in the school prizes season. And basically what that is, is you have schools um, that will gift an edition of the Rainbow Bible or an edition of a, of a different Bible potentially uh, to year six uh, as they, you know, in preparation for them to move on. So it's like a leaver's yeah. gift. And that's something that the existing Rainbow uh, has a huge share of. Right. Uh, is very, very popular. Mm. And certainly that's something that we, we would, you know, want to not just maintain, but grow. Yeah, we want more definitely. schools to be adopting the rainbow. And, and so, you know, it was why it was so important, actually, in not just involving children um, in the development, but also involving schools and teachers yes. to make sure that all of this, all of the ideas that we've been getting from children, that when we're then actually putting it into practice, that what the content we're creating it's going to work alongside a school's RE syllabus mm. and the curriculum that's set. And obviously that can change. Yeah. So making sure that the, the content was versatile enough, uh, you know, involving teachers in those decisions was fundamental to make sure that we got it toned correctly. Yeah. Um, but the, the, we, we, we've got bigger ambitions for this. We, 
yes, we'd love more schools to, to, to take it on as a, as a gift uh, for, for their pupils. But we don't want this to be a leaver's gift. Mm. Uh, we actually want this to be a welcome gift. It's like this is something you would give a child yeah. in year three uh, as a six, seven year old coming into the school uh, as their first full text Bible. And that this Bible will then stay with them, and be the Bible that they use throughout primary school. And that, that, that would be incredible. It, yeah. it, it's, it's, a, it's a bold ambition. Yeah. But we just think in terms, again, when all of this is sort of born from how do we have the most impact? Yes. And, you know, when for this to be a, the, a child's first full Bible, and, and yes, to initially it may be that there's more assisted reading. Yes. And actually a lot of the, the content is, is designed to sort of help build Bible reading confidence in yes. that child so that they can as they progress, uh, as they get older and as they get more competent in reading in general, that they'll be able to navigate it easier yeah. and that they'll, they'll learn the skills needed to effectively read the Bible. Yeah. But the idea that this would be something that a, a child uses and it's their first Bible and it's theirs and it's yeah. individual to them and it's got their notes in it and their thoughts yeah, definitely. and it's part of their faith journey. And then when it comes to starting secondary school, that's really when we'd say, right, now you're ready for the youth edition. Yeah. Because that's now, that was developed with people 11 to 17 year olds. So yeah. we know the content is going to be relevant and more appropriate for that age range. Definitely. And we've already, you know, we've already, uh, we've got some relationships with, with schools uh, yeah. who have already agreed that they're going to start doing this, which is hugely exciting. Definitely. But this is, you know, this is a big ambition. We're talking about a cultural shift. Uh, and as soon as you start talking about something that's been set in, set in its ways for a period of time, that's a huge commitment, but it's one that we are very committed to. Well, I think it's a fantastic uh, aim because at age six, you know, they're starting their school journey and what better way to sort of start that journey by getting into their hands a Bible that has been designed specifically for them and, and with them in mind and their, and their school. So it, it's a fantastic thing. And, and also I was talking to Jack earlier, um, my six-year-old daughter can read this Bible. We take it in turns to read verses from it and she can follow it and read it. So it's certainly um, successful from a translation point of view. It's accessible to, ki to children of that age, um, which, which is ultimately what you want, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. If, if they struggle to read it, assisted reading, uh, of course, will, will come into play there. Um, but if it's a Bible they can read, um, that they have a chance of reading independently, all the more better. Because we, we were speaking about faith, weren't we? And how, you know, it's not just uh, something that's one dimensional, you know, scripture being read to a child no. is one thing. But what would be better is if the scripture is read between you and discussed uh, between you as well, because there's a higher, higher um, chance of that of that child really grasping these things yeah. for themselves and for the scripture to have an impact yeah. on their lives. Yeah, it is. And this is what we say. It's an invitation to discover. Yeah. You know, and that's that's really what you're trying to facilitate is the opportunity for children, for young people yeah. to, to discover scripture for themselves. Definitely. It's um, I think there's there's probably some uh, statistics about the knowledge, knowledge, biblical knowledge uh, in this country is probably not probably not very high. It's probably mm. not where it used to be. Um, so it's all the more important that we have projects like this, isn't it? And publishers that are willing to uh, approach things differently and from from the other end of things, shall we say, uh, and develop uh, Bibles like this in mind. So it's uh, it's it's it's, fun. it's very valuable. So how how can we support the Bible Society, Jack? Perhaps if we close by just thinking about how the viewers, how subscribers could it can get involved and support you and uh, try and further the work of the Bible Society? Yeah, fantastic question. Um, well, certainly in terms of uh, the, the new Rainbow Edition, you know, I would implore anyone who's, who's interested to find out more about it to, to uh, go onto our website, mm -hmm. um, where you'll find a full range of all the different projects that we're involved in, but you'll also be able to look at um, uh, additional information about the Rainbow Bible, mm -hmm. uh, as well as uh, video content of some of the schools and children who have helped to create it and their feedback. Uh, there's also a sampler, a PDF sampler that you can download so you Fantastic. can have an actual look through some of the material. Um, and really, I would just say that anyone who's who's looking at this and thinking, oh, you know, is is this going to be suitable for my child? Is it okay? Have a look at it. Mm. Just, you know, have a look at the content. It really has been developed with children, with teachers, with people who care for mm. children. Uh, we're very confident that 
that it is you know the best going to be the best bible available first full text bible available for a child yeah. um and significantly uh when it comes out it'll be uh, uh rrp of 1899 which is actually the exact same price as the current edition Right. So despite all of that work and all of the effort and resource that's gone into enhancing this, it was very important that we, we made a decision really early on in the project. Actually, this has to be at the same price. Mm. And that's largely because we know that schools aren't going to have more budget. Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, they, we, can, we, can, we can argue with them about how much better this edition is, mm. but they'll say, well, we, we, we can't afford it. Yeah. So um, making sure, and this really goes back to making sure we're producing Bibles that offer value. Mm. And how do we put more into it? Yeah. So yeah, please do have a look online uh, on uh, to, to find out more about this Bible. But also, if you go onto our website, you'll find out about some of the other amazing projects. Uh, I think a lot of people just aren't aware of how much we do. Yeah, uh, I, I, I wasn't. I know it, that. Yeah, it, it, I could. I could. We could. That could be a whole separate uh, interview, yes. just talking about the different projects <laughs> we've got going on. Um, a really, you know, a fantastic way of people, you know, thinking how, you know, I'd love to contribute mm. to Bible Society's mission. Uh, there's, uh, you can, you know, a monthly donation system called Bible a Month. Mm -hmm. And the concept behind that is that people donate the amount it costs to actually produce a Bible, print and distribute a Bible in someone's language. So by donating each month, you're actually helping a Bible, you're helping to create, get a Bible printed, created and sent to someone who really desperately cool. wants one in yeah. their native language, which I think is an amazing thing to yeah, be part that's of. that's brilliant, yeah, absolutely. So, and that's called Bible a Month. Bible right? a Month. Yeah. But I, we'll, I would really we'll suggest, yeah, look, look online because we've, you know, we've got the Psalm 27 Garden that uh, mm. just has one silver uh, medal uh, and we've uh, got uh, Open the Book, which is doing amazing work mm -hmm. in thousands of schools, secular schools, sharing the stories of the Bible with children, getting them involved again, getting interaction, getting yeah. people involved in it. Um, what was the drama one that you mentioned to me, Jack? Again, the the, the, the film. The, oh, the, and ah, uh, yes, oh yeah, and and that's fantastic. If anyone's interested in film, and, and yeah. you know, uh, absolutely check out the pitch. The pitch, right? So the the pitch essentially uh, allows uh, uh, you know new filmmakers, people who are, who are sort of interested in making film, they're tasked with picking a story or a theme from the Bible mm -hmm. and then making a short film about it and interpreting it in their own way. Okay. And, you know, we've had sci-fi films, we've had horror films, we've had comedies, <laughs> uh, your thrillers. Yeah. Uh, and the, actual, the, the standard of some of these films that are produced is just absolutely exceptional. So the winning pitch, basically, if they pitch an idea and if they win, then that's, it gets funding to actually get that film made. And that's something wow. that Bible Society supports. Fantastic. And, you know, we've got films that have gone on to win multiple awards, uh, you know, at film festivals and really kickstart the careers of, of would be sort of yeah. filmmakers. And in, in some cases, you've got uh, people who are, you know, they've, they're into making films, but they've never read the Bible. They don't consider themselves a Christian. And now here they are exploring the Bible and interpreting its themes and then creating a film about mm. it. Which is absolutely amazing when you think that's, about that's it. That's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. It's, uh, so you're clearly involved in a lot of different areas, a lot of different sectors. Again, I, I apologies to any of my colleagues who feel like I should have mentioned one of their projects. There are so many things going on. Um, well, we are going to link heavily to the, the Bible Society website, which, which I've had a look at. And, and it, it is a big website. You can spend a lot of time looking around at all the different um, projects and, and, and missions that are going on and it's all with an aim to getting those life life changing life giving encounters uh, with God's word so definitely check out the Bible Society website uh, some of the projects we're involved with Jack it just remains for me to uh, say thank you thank you very much for your time Pleasure. and for the invitation down here it was absolutely uh, brilliant to spend some time with you talking about the Bible Society so check it out guys and we'll catch up on another video soon bye bye